You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we talk all about generating the right answers with Azure AI Search. What's new since Microsoft Ignite? Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show where we're talking all about generating the right answers with Azure AI Search with my friend Farzad. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm really excited for today. Fantastic. So tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, my name is Farzad Sanavala. I am a product manager on Azure AI Search, formerly known as Azure Cognitive Search. Oh, so, so things have changed since Microsoft Ignite. Can you fill us in on some of those details? So since Microsoft Ignite, we're pleased to announce that we have a new name for our product. So formerly known as Azure Cognitive Search, we are now Azure AI Search. Ooh. I know, fancy, right? Yeah. And so another name change that we have is we previously had a feature in Azure AI Search called Semantic Search, and we are now calling that Semantic Ranker. Yeah, and I like this I like this title because if I remember right, when we talked earlier with Liam a couple of weeks ago, the Semantic Search, what it actually did is it took the keyword search and the vector search, and then it re-ranked those, those things. So ranking makes more sense to me. Am I getting this right? Yeah, hundred percent correct. We know that vector search alone is, you know, it's good, but it's not the best possible retrieval mode. We have hybrid search, which is even better. But hybrid search with semantic ranking on top to get that best possible precision and ordered ranking—that's what you want to go for. And we're pleased to announce that in Azure AI Search. Amazing. Were there any other announcements that you could just sort of rattle off to us? Yeah, let's talk about it. So talk about uh, Azure AI Search, Vector Search, and Semantic Ranker. We're pleased to announce that at, at Microsoft Ignite, we announced the general availability of Vector Search. So we're ready to support you. Go use it in your production-ready applications. Um, we're really excited to uh, you know see a bunch of your usage with Vector Search, Hybrid Search, and so on. Uh, additionally, we had another public preview announcement at Microsoft Ignite. And so we have a new feature that I'll, that I'll dive into in a bit called integrated vectorization. And Ooh. so talk about kind of end-to-end -end ingestion. I think this is a really, really cool feature I'm, I'm excited to kind of show uh, today to really you know, make the whole RAG pattern process and using Azure AI Search, chunking vectorization a whole bunch easier. And then lastly, we also have generally available the Semantic Ranker. So it's been in preview for a while, but now it's GA, go use it, uh, get that best possible retrieval in Azure AI Search. And that's awesome. This is all good stuff. But oh, and there you go. There's a slide. Because Liam, he he foretold, he's like, you should you should watch for another announcement regarding perhaps pricing. And, and this is the pricing announcement. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, this is the really exciting piece of the semantic ranker, which is now GA. So as we know, hybrid plus uh, semantic re-ranking re is the best possible retrieval mode. We want all of you to leverage it for your gener generative AI applications. And so we made significant changes to our business model. And so it's going to be a lot more economical now than it was in preview. So you get a free thousand requests per month. And then additionally, it's only a dollar per thousand requests thereafter. So Big, big changes to the business model, a lot more economical for you to use. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Uh, so if you're building like uh, AI LLM inspired apps, you're using a Azure AI search, it's very economical to, to do the retrieval augmented generation pattern with this new model. Oh, 100%. In fact, we encourage you. Uh, we had a black blog post that Liam, I think, talked about earlier on the AI show that actually showed how much better semantic uh, re-ranking is with hybrid search. And so now with this new new business model, uh, you could use it uh, for all your RAG scenarios anytime you interact with Azure AI Search and grab your data to the LLM. So really excited about this one. Awesome. So what's next? I, I know there was some, there was some feature. Yeah. Th this is the thing that I want to ask you about because integrated yeah. vectorization sounds interesting, but can you help us explain what it does? Yeah, yeah. So integrated vectorization is really just about end-to-end -end processing for your generative AI or really just building the RAG pattern. And so in Azure AI Search, previously during during uh, our preview of vector search, it, it was really manual. A lot of times if you add you know, a bunch of long PDFs, a lot of long documents, you had to like manually chunk it, uh, maybe you know adjust the, the, the sentence overlap window. It was a very manual process. Yeah. And a lot of 
yeah, a lot of a lot of customers loved using Azure Eye Search, and we have a capability called the indexer in AI enrichment and skills. And so a lot of them wanted to say, hey, this is this is just going to be amazing if we could just have a built-in skill that'll automatically chunk these documents. And then not only that, but our probably my personal favorite embedding model, the Azure OpenAI embedding model, if we could just automatically send those chunks within the enrichment process um, in Azure AI Search, get those get those embedding uh, vector representations of your data for your chunks, and then just automatically throw them into your search index fields, and then go crazy querying. And so that's exactly what integrated vectorization is it's, it's this just, is really cool yeah I'm so, sorry to because I, I i i build some samples you know with the uh, prompt flow that uses azure ai search all the time but mm -hmm. i had to write my own script and it's not it's not the funnest of code to write <laughs> you know just like okay how, what's the overlap window on the paragraphs you know how much text should i put so you're saying that now there's a new way to do this all in an integrated way Yep, it's all you just set it up one time when you're setting up your your uh, indexer and which skills you want to use, which we have a, a split skill for chunking and a, a Azure OpenAI embedding skill, as well as a custom embedding skill if you want to use your own uh, custom embedding model. And then once you set that up one time, you're done. You can schedule your indexer to you know grab your documents from your Azure data source like Blob Storage, SQL, Cosmos, whatever it may be. And then, then you're done. It's, it's hands off and you have your RAG solution kind of just work for you. That that is impressive. So what else do you have to show us? Yeah, so I do have a demo that I think is going to be really, really interesting. All righty. So inside of our um, Azure search vector samples, uh, we have a bunch of different code samples here. Um, everyone nowadays is a Python guy, so I'm going to show a Python code sample. Mm -hmm. um, so as, as you can see here, all I'm doing is importing our Azure search documents library with our latest kind of pre-release uh, version, importing OpenAI, uh, Azure storage blob, because I have some documents I want to, I want to store in blob storage. So over here, I'm just going to skip briefly skim through this part, just a bunch of um, libraries I need from Azure search documents. I configured some environment variables here from my uh, Azure AI search uh, service, um, as well as blo uh, my blob uh, connection string. And so over here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect to blob storage. So all I did is inside of this documents folder in my blob container, I think I put like about five, five or six PDFs that I actually nice. want to do vector search retrieval over. Okay. Quick so you question, can because people yeah. are going to ask this. What is This is available in multiple languages is that right what languages are available with this sdk yeah azure ai search is available in python .NET, java and javascript type script okay cool so because i know they were gonna everyone's gonna be like well can i do this in my language yes you probably can all right i'm sorry keep going you're good you're good happy to show uh, so yeah so then once i connect it to my blob storage inside of this super notebook now i want to create a data source inside of azure i search okay and so all i have to all i could do here is if you follow this code block just uh, use the search indexer data uh, container and data source connection method i'm uh -huh. passing in my um my blob connection string and my container name and then boom I get Azure Search Integrated Vectorization Sample Blob, which is probably a really long name for a blob for a blob data source, but that's okay. So then, once I have that, I want to just if I could pause right here. So effectively, you're you're telling Azure AI Search, "Hey, my data lives over here. Here's a connection to it," and that's persisted in Azure AI Search. Is that right? Hundred percent. This is, and this is much better because uh, and sorry, I'm going to put myself on this on the screen here because I think. Before, I always wonder, like, because just because I make the index one time with the vector with my goofy code that I use for whatever Contoso Outdoors company, that doesn't mean that it's going to continue to be updated. Is this a situation that makes it so that this this can continue to be updated? Correct. Uh, see, you said it so fast. I was like so excited. I was. I thought you were gonna be like, yes, you can <laughs> upload documents whenever you want to Blob Storage, and it will pick it up. Is that right? Hundred percent. That's what all it's right. all about. Let's keep going. Cool. So now that I connected uh, my data source in Azure AI Search, in this case Blob, you can do Cosmos, you can do SQL, ADLS, whatever you want. Um, now I'm just going to create my search index. Okay. So this part stays standard with uh, creating any Azure AI Search index. Uh, I have my schema relatively simple. Parent ID because I want to keep the parent document um, right. at least uh, IDs. 
title because I want to maybe display the title of my PDF. So when I actually uh, uh, in my in my UI in my in my rack solution, uh, chunk ID, chunk, and vector. So the, these are probably the, the real important ones that um, is actually going to be used by a skill set that I'm going to show uh, later. And then and if this you part scroll up because I want to make sure because people yeah. sometimes people lose. I I at least I lost the story in this. So effectively, this is like a paragraph of text from your doc because your PDF might be 10,000 pages long. This is just a single chunk. And the parent ID is referencing, this is the PDF. This is the chunk number. This is the title of the thing. And is, is this right? Yeah, 100%. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I tell people about this is this is super useful specifically when you want to economize the stuff that you put into a prompt for retrieval augmented generation, because if you overspill the prompt, it's not going to tell you anything. It's just going to be really wrong. Yep. That, that's precisely right. Awesome. So cool. So moving forward, uh, this part I'm not going to spend too much time on because I think you've seen it a lot of times. This is the vector search configuration. Um, so over here, I'm just going to use, uh, I just configured a couple, but I'm only going to use my HNSW uh, vector index on my vector field um, property on my uh, th that I configured over here in my schema. Um, and then I also have this thing called vectorizer. So this is new. So this is another cool feature that's part of the integrated vectorization. We know that we're going to be doing uh, Azure OpenAI skills, which I'm going to show in, in the next code block. But as part of this vectorizer, this allows me to take advantage of query vectorization. So now when I pass in text or image, whatever it may be, what it's going to do automatically when I start showing an example of searching documents, it already has my Azure OpenAI configuration over here. So I no longer have to you know, use the same function to generate a, a query vector, then pass it back to, to Azure AI search. Right. It'll just handle it for me. So pretty, pretty convenient as well. Nice. And then uh, real quick, my semantic config over here, So because I want to take advantage of that semantic ranker. So that's the only prerequisite for that. So then... Uh, this is the cool part, the new part. So creating a skill set. So in, in Azure AI Search, there's a bunch of skills. So what I'm going to do first is use the split skill. Okay, so the split skill, my, as it says in my description here, split skill to chunk the documents. So what I want to do is I'm, I, I go ahead and look at the documentation for what the split skill contract requires in Azure AI Search. And so I'm just going to go ahead and really just pay attention to these two properties, since these are the ones that you probably want to care, uh, care right. most about. Um, so text split mode pages. So that means uh, I want to split by page. Uh, but what, what, what these two parameters mean over here, maximum page length, 2048, this unit is in characters of text. And so this means that every 2048 characters inside of the uh, PDF that I have in blob split. And I'm considering that a chunk. And then this other parameter page overlap length, like we talked about earlier, that's the sentence overlap in characters uh, unit as well. So 20 characters before, 20 characters after um, each chunk. And then and lastly, cool. just doing input and outputs to output to um, the uh, pages field inside um, of the uh, cognitive search index through the skill set pipeline. And then from here, now I'm just doing some field mapping. Now that I have my chunks inside of this um, pages, what I want to do is I want to go inside all of these pages and then generate and pass uh, these chunks into my Azure OpenAI embedding skill. And then I'm returning back uh, the embedding from the re uh, response that I get back from Azure OpenAI's embedding ADA002 model. Then I'm mapping it to the vector field that I defined in my cog in my Azure AI, AI search index. Can and you scroll it. up just one, one second? So this is important because I, at first when I saw 2048, I was like, wow, is that the number of tokens? But no, this is the number of characters with a 20 character overlap, which is, and you can totally change that uh, yourself. The yeah. second question I have, are these skills now part of Azure AI Search? Because I know you can build your own custom skills, but these are actually part of Azure AI Search now. Is that correct? Yeah, this split skill is uh, split skill actually existed for a long time. We just made some updates to it to like ah. cater for more chunk like scenarios. Makes sense. And so uh, another thing that that may be confusing to some people, I know it was to me initially, these skills you define once and then you can reuse them for an index over time. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Keep keep showing us. Sorry about that. 
Cool. No worries. And so uh, and pretty much almost done. And then we can get to actually querying the index. So this index projections, all this really is, is some people like t taking. Um, so, so once the skill set uh, chunks your documents and generates the vectors, uh, some customers like having their chunks in a separate AI search index and some like having it, you know, maybe with their parent documents or parent IDs. And so that's all this index projections uh, code is really doing. Um, so it's pretty much just getting the output from my um, previous uh, step in my skill set process, which was the Azure OpenAI embedding skill, and now just mapping it to the different fields. So this from my uh, pages over here is coming over here to my actual chunks. So these are the actual text uh, of chunks chunks of text. Mm -hmm. uh, and then vector over here is the uh, actual vector field, the, um, uh, you know, 1536 dimensions of uh, flo flo floating points. Um, and then over here, I'm getting actually from blob storage, I want to keep the title. So I'm just doing a field map um, from my blob storage uh, metadata field, just so I can display the title as well. And this is yeah. just like a way of aggregating all of the data that all the skills generated into, put this into this field, put this into that field. This is cool. Yep, precisely. And so that's it. So then all I have to do is create my indexer. And this part's pretty cool because this is where you can kind of, um, you know, have like a schedule. So you could have your indexer run like on a, a weekly basis, on a daily basis. So if you're constantly moving data in, inside my blob storage container, it'll automatically run, execute these skills, these, uh, the chunking and the vectorization that I just defined. And it, it's automatically going to be mapped to my search, to my uh, AI search index. So uh, just a quick question yeah. about that in terms of economy does it remember things it's already indexed yes it does oh, it, okay yep, yep that's cool yep yeah and i was wondering that because like let's generally you know if you delete something it means it doesn't have to do anything but if you update something it does have to do something or if you add something but if you leave something there you don't want to spend you know the tokens through a to two if you're doing the embeddings and that will take care of it yeah, yeah, for sure. You definitely don't want to re if you already spent like a bunch of money vectorizing things and it's a duplicate, um, the indexer is smart enough um, to, to detect that. So yeah, you're good to go. I love it. Cool. So yeah, once I created my indexer, I wait, I think uh, it was about a minute or, minute or two, and then it goes ahead and it does the chunking, does the vectorization, grabs my PDF, some blob, and now I can start doing some queries. And so this is pretty much the pure ve vector similarity search. So you can see over here, I have a query, which is more comprehensive, Northwind Health Plus versus Northwind Standard. Mm. Um, over here is my vector, essentially my re request body. Um, I have a vectorizable text query. And so I'm just going to pass in the pure text. It's going to my vectorizer that I defined earlier. I'm just going to say, hey, k equals 1, just give me uh, one chunk back. Uh, do it over my vector field. And I also have this field, uh, exhaustive equals true, just because uh, I want to find like 100% recall or the ground truth value. But um, if you want, you could you could uh, turn that to false and just uh, do an ANN search as well. Mm -hmm. And so here I go. I get my cosine similarity score. I get my content and it tells me exactly Northwind Health Plus offers more comprehensive coverage than Northwind Health Standard Ooh. with some additional information for my chunk. And that's it. This is... This is amazing because, I mean, just from the search alone, I'm getting really good answers. Imagine if you put that into a language model to generate even more customized responses. Because I've always told people, you stop using LLMs like databases, use them like language calculators, use Azure AI Search as your database, and then put those chunks into, into your search request. This is, this is amazing, my friend. Where can people go to find out more about this stuff? Yeah, precisely. Uh, you can honestly visit all of these resources uh, by visiting our blog post. And so we announced uh, at Microsoft Ignite the general availability of Vector Search GA and Semantic Ranker, as well as a hint to the uh, integrated vectorization feature that I just showed today. So I recommend visiting our blog post at aka.ms slash um, Ignite 2023. There you go. It's right here. It's right here. I put it up on the screen for you, man. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. By the way, this is absolutely amazing. It's something that I've been struggling to know. How do I set this up? Because anytime I do these samples, particularly with retrieval augmented generation, I'm doing the chunking and the stuff. And it's just like a one time thing for the one sample. But the reality is, this thing needs to be a living thing. And this does it all for you. That's right. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for being with us, my friend. Yeah, no problem. I love to be here.
Awesome. And thank you so much for watching and learning all about generating the right answers with Azure AI Search, the new news since Microsoft Ignite. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.